My goodness. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Mother. And uh, what I call mothers indeed. Those that may not have their own uh, natural children, but have raised children. Uh, I even go out on a limb and go whether they are human or animal. You'd be surprised at the people who do not have human, but their pets are like their children. And they've raised them from birth all through. Taken them to the doctor, stayed up with them when they were sick, played with them, fed them, nurtured them. They cried when they went to their rest. So we give all honor to all mothers this day. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your goodness and your kindness. I thank you for this day of honor that we give to mothers, Father God. I thank you for their diligence to see us, raise us, Father. None of us would be here today if it were not for our mothers, Father God. Those that are yet still here with us and those that have gone on to glory, Father, we thank you for their presence, Father God, for the things that you have instilled in them and how they blessed us to live a life, Father, now that we can serve and honor you in the way that you want us to, Father. That's to bless each one today, bless our hearts, our minds, our spirits, Father God, as we get closer to you, so we can bless you with the life that we live, Father, the legacy that we even send down to our generations and to our children, Father God, that they too will come to know you, to follow you, and honor and worship you in all we do, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So all across America and in some parts of the world, uh, people are giving honor to mothers today. Uh, motherhood is one of the most cherished and sacred institutions that we have today, and it is the most unappreciated as well. Greeting card companies, florists, um, restaurants uh, are making millions of dollars this time of year, hoping and helping fathers and husbands and children to express their feelings of the hard work, the dedication that these women have shown them all throughout the year. Uh, we all have cell phones with unlimited uh, calls. But back in the day, they, when you had to pay for long distance, yes. <laughs> uh, the phone companies racked up millions of dollars. Because that was the one day out of the whole year where more long distance calls were made than any other time because everyone was calling their mother. So even God had a special place knowing about mothers and motherhood. I found it very interesting when he went to, in, in the book of Proverbs, he not only talks about mothers, but he talks about women in general. And we who search, we men who search for a good, godly woman can be found in the uh, words that are spoken in Proverbs of the type of women that a good man should find. Now I want you to understand that it's that a good man who wants to find a good woman, this woman has these characteristics. Now we're talking about a time uh, in the uh, Old Testament as compared to what we have today uh, so don't look at this, especially some of you women that say, I ain't doing that. <laughs> if nothing else, your mindset should be like this. So Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 31 in the contemporary English version. It says, a truly good wife is the most precious treasure a man can find. Her husband depends on her and she never lets him down. She is good to him every day of her life. 
And with her own hands, she gladly makes clothes. She is like a sailing ship that brings food from across the sea. She sets up before, she gets up before daylight to prepare food for her family and her servants. She knows how to buy land and how to plant a vineyard. She always works hard. She knows when to buy or sell and she stays busy until late at night. She spins her own cloth. She helps the poor and the needy. Her family has warm clothing and so she doesn't worry when it snows. She does her own sewing and everything she wears is beautiful. Her husband is well known and respected leader in the city. She makes clothes to sell to the shop owners. She is strong and graceful, as well as cheerful about the future. Her words are sensible, and her advice is thoughtful. She takes good care of her family and is never lazy. Her children praise her, and with great pride, her husband says, there are many good women, but you are the best. Amen. Charm can be deceiving and beauty fades away. But a woman who honors the Lord deserves to be praised. I got to read that part one more time. Say it again. <laughs> Charm can be deceiving and beauty fades away. But a woman who honors the Lord deserves to be praised. Show her respect. Praise her in public for what she has done. Amen. Amen. What an awesome group of scriptures that tells about a wife and a mother. We sometimes, I know we, Michelle and I have counseled a lot of uh, people about to be married and sometimes we bring this up and Especially some of the younger generations, they look at this and go, Ooh, I don't do none of that. But if you think about the spirit of it, as opposed to the letter of it, a wife is supposed to take care of her family. It's like the husband is supposed to take care of the family as well. And this is a woman who cherishes the thought that she has a family that she wants to see progress and be prosperous. She has not so much concerned about her own welfare, but she's more concerned about the welfare of her family. That's why I had to reiterate verse 30. We've talked many times, Michelle and I, to women and to men who have put so much emphasis on looks. Well, she's got to look this way when I come home. I want her spangly dressed, and I want her in the finest array, and her makeup needs to be right when I come home from work. And she's got, well, you know, he needs to come, he needs to go to the gym at least three times a week. But I don't want that beer gut. I want to see some muscles. I want to see some six pack. You know, I want to see, you know, him glistening when he comes through that door. <laughs> yeah, that's my man. That's my woman. This number yeah. Two. This number right here. I hear that. <laughs> yeah, you got tortillas. I got ham hocks and everything else up in there. Yeah, baby. Chin wings. Ribs. <laughs> Donuts. Come on. But I love what it says, charm can be deceiving, yes. and beauty fades away. away. Amen. But a woman or a man who honors the Lord deserves to be praised. We go all the way back to Genesis. In the third chapter, verse 20. It says, and Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Any human that is on the face of the earth, in essence, you can call Eve your mother. Or knowing that the DNA strain came down through 
Eve. Some people believe it was the Big Bang Theory, and you can Big Bang all you want. God said, bang. God said, let there be life, and bang! bang. There it was. <laughs> then he molded and he made out of the clays of the earth and breathed life into human beings. And that is why we honor, going all the way back to our ancestor, Adam and Eve. And we give them glory and praise. Mothers, that is this precious thing. Great sacrifices go into motherhood. The body is sent through a great series of changes. The hormones are sent into frenzy, and the metabolism is altered greatly. Any of y'all men who know your woman has been pregnant, let me tell you. I hear moaning and groaning back here already. <laughs> One o'clock in the morning, you got to get up and go to the grocery store. Find something because that craving and hit. Or they can't sleep in one position as there were 20 all throughout the night. Many changes go through in this woman's body. Now according to some physicians that I read, a woman is closer to death when giving birth at any other time in her life. Amen. Yet to produce life is the ultimate gift. Now that's outside of the gift of the Holy Spirit. That God has bestowed upon one and it should be cherished and honored more than one day a year. We know we choose this one day but every day we ought to honor our mothers, our wives as mothers, our children who have become mothers, who made us grandparents, our children's children who have made us great grandparents. They need to be honored more than just one day a week. Because it took something to go through. Proverbs 23, 25 says, So give your father and mother joy. May she who gave you birth be happy. There's many a mother today who cannot wait to get out of church and go home and have their grandchildren come by or their children come by just to do nothing else than to bring a little flower and to say happy Mother's Day or get a call for that child that just acknowledges to make you happy. You might get a text, send you a picture. I had a son came by early this morning dropping off some flowers for Michelle. This is wonderful. The woman, the woman who gave birth, she needs to be happy. Amen. When you think of motherhood and the miracle of birth, you have to look at the complexity of fertilization and gestation. So I'm going to give you a lesson. <laughs> Because, <laughs> you know, when you're young, you don't think a whole lot about it until you start to become a parent. You need to know what this woman is really going through. Once the male sperm is introduced to the female egg, a metamorphosis begins. That metamorphosis is called life. That which was separate now becomes one unit. The cells and the membranes begin to separate and form different parts of the body. The womb is the protective shell for the fetus. The amniotic fluid serves as a buffer or a shock absorber for the fetus so that the movements of the mother will not damage it. Did anybody see the, uh, the uh, YouTube video of the woman dancing? Mm -hmm. I mean, she ain't just dancing. This woman is moving. Yeah. And she, she's yeah. pregnant. About nine yeah. months. About nine months. Really pregnant. <laughs> and she's dancing like she's at the club. Mm -hmm. Just uh, moving and going and down. And that poor, that, I didn't want to say that poor baby, but that joyful baby mm -hmm. is protected from all that movement. 
Yep. Can you imagine the joy that's going on with that child inside the womb yeah. because of the happiness that's going on with the mother outside? Yes. Science has proven this. That these, these fetuses take on the aptitude of everything that the mother's going through. If she's sad, the fetus is sad. If the mother's happy, the fetus is happy. The umbilical cord serves as the feeding tube for the fetus to give it nourishment, oxygen, and essential nutrients that the mother has to help the child to build up its immune system. This is a quick science, a biological thing to let you know this is what's going on inside of a woman's body. Now, we men, we ain't got a clue. <laughs> and I'm one who said and have continued to say, unless God changes it, if it was up to men to have a baby, wouldn't be none. <laughs> Like, Father, you gotta find another way. <laughs> Cause I ain't doing that. Second Corinthians 5 17 says, When someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He is not the same anymore. A new life has begun. This child that was living in an atmosphere protected by the mother's body, being nurtured by the mother, being protected. Once that child comes forth, it is now a new life. It's going into a different atmosphere. It has to be nurtured and fed an entirely different way. It has to be protected entirely different way. But they become a brand new person. That's why it was told that you have to be born <coughs> again. Now, Romans 15 and 1. What? It says, we who have strong faith should help those who are weak. We should not live to please ourselves. The child cannot help himself. It is brand new. Child, baby, infant cannot tell you when he's hurting. They can cry, and you can try to figure it out. But you don't know if it's a cry for hunger. If it's a cry because diaper needs to be changed. To cry because there's something internally wrong with that child? That child is weak. And you who are strong, you need to be able to help that child to be delivered and to be brought, to be changed so that that child can live again. So you have to look at the example of the mother bird. Mother bird makes sure that they take care of the baby. See, there are some women who are unable to have children. They're unable to carry that fetus to term. Some have a child and it is premature. These infants are, uh, they need a lot of special care. They are put into incubators or they put uh, hooked up to heart monitors or lung machines in order for that body to begin to work on its own. So we must make sure that even during that time, we take care and make sure that those who are watching those children can help them. The baby bird is helpless. The mother has to go out and get the food. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I know Michelle and I, <coughs> our children was like that. <laughs> Mouth open always, feed me. We raised six children. And so, it was 
was always a whole lot of food that had to be given. I look at my grandsons now, you can feed them now, and 15 minutes later they're talking about when's dinner. <laughs> you got a snack? <laughs> I'm hungry. Give me something to eat. But the mother bird, her entire life is spent on making sure that this ch these chicks, these younglings, are fed. Sometimes even at her own peril. And sometimes there's places she has to go to get the food that there could be predators ready to take her life. But she will not stop until she has made sure that she has taken care of her children. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Whose weakness? Our weakness. There's times when we don't want to do specific things. Sometimes we are tired. Sometimes we are overworked. Sometimes we are in peril. But we have family, we have children, we have those who depend upon us for their very existence and their mothers especially are ones who will sometimes go without sleep, go without rest, go without eating to ensure that their children are taken care of. They are at their weakest. And it is during those times that God gives strength because that's when he is made perfect in their weakness. When they can't do for them own selves, God provides nourishment. God provides rest. God provides strength so that they can continue to do the job of taking care of their children. Yes, we need to give some high honor to these mothers. And then sometimes we find ourselves in bad situations. But we know that God is the one who will take care of us. Paul even said it in 2 Corinthians 12 and 10. That is why I take pleasure in my weakness and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For I, when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. I've watched Michelle go through some trying things with our children. I thought I was going through them, but I wasn't going through them like Michelle. So one thing you got to realize is that women, you mothers, you have what's called a blood covenant with your children. They came through you. Blood was shed when you gave birth to your children. So there is a greater blood covenant that you that mothers have with their children that fathers do not have. We can feel, we can do what we can, but there's always reason why football players, when they run down the field and make that touchdown, turn to the camera and say, hi, mom. <laughs> Now, Daddy's the one that's been out there, rustling them around, <laughs> getting in the dirt. Hi, 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 yeah. Got them where they had to go, but hi, Ma. <laughs> it all goes back to that covenant relationship. God wants us to understand that even when we are at our weakness, God has the ability to bring strength to our mothers. We have to be born again. Just like that fetus had to come out of the womb into a whole new area. Children have to do the same. We have to do the same. John 3, 1 through 7. Since there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher, come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most surely I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? We all know that's an impossibility. But Jesus answered and said, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. Even in Matthew, the 18th chapter, verse 3, he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The disciples had come to Jesus because they wanted to know who would really be the greatest. And he tells them, listen, you have to learn how to start all over again. Have a childlike faith. I look and I remember our children. We've got small children here today. They do not know the concept of getting up at 7 o'clock in the morning, putting your clothes on, getting in the car, and go to work. They don't know the concept of when you get paid, you have to divvy out this for this bill, and this for this bill, and this for food. They don't know the uh, operations that go behind, well, we got a doctor's appointment, so we got to go take you here, or you got a dentist appointment, you need to get a filling here, or you, know, you have an eye appointment because you now need glasses. They don't know anything about that. All they know is somebody's taking care of me. And I'm happy because they are taking care of me. I put my trust in them because they have shown how they can take care of me. He's telling you, child of God, you need to become just like a child. Quit being so concerned about what's going to happen with you in your life because God is there to help take care of you. He already knows how to get you taken care of, help you with your finances, help you with your health, give you what you need in times of trouble, comfort you when you are in times of need, bless you when all else seems to be falling through the cracks in your life. He has a way of being able to sustain you when nothing else helps. Just like that child in the womb no visible means. But that child is nourished all through 24 hours a day. That heartbeat is constantly, continually pumping 24 hours a day inside that womb. Nothing particular that the woman has to do outside of eat healthy, be right. But God has made it to where that child can grow. Honey, it's the same way God wants for us. To learn to trust him, to feed us, to nurture us, to guide us, to govern us, to guard us, to help us. That is how we grow. We have to learn how to be changed. Just like a child. Any woman can give birth. But it takes love and dedication to be a mother. Amen. I believe all of us know some women who have given birth. We've met some who, and I don't know why, it's beyond my comprehension, they just love to be pregnant. Hmm. I heard somebody, <laughs> I got a couple of buddies. <laughs> It ain't about the child, it ain't about raising the child, it is love to be pregnant. And I'm like, ooh, ooh. Because anybody can get burned. But to go back to just what we said in Proverbs 31, to have that care, and that love, and that desire to take care of that child. Bless that child, raise that child, nurture that child. You find it fleeting so often. So today, may every woman, mother, mothers indeed, 
grandmother, godmother, aunt, sister, niece, daughter, granddaughter, and goddaughter. We want you to have a happy Mother's Day today. Amen. We want you to be blessed today. Let the Holy Spirit lift you up today. Be honored today. Be honored every day. But since we have set aside a specific day for you, make that husband cook for you or take you out to dinner. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I just see some brothers going. Oh, 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 a little bottle of glass of wine or something and close the door. And let her enjoy her peace and her quiet because tomorrow's Monday. <laughs> <laughs> and it's back to normal. <laughs> back to reality. <laughs> but bless her today. Amen. Give her the honor due her name. Amen. Mother. And continue to lift her up. Amen. 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 I want to thank you for watching this video. I pray that you were blessed by it, that it encourages you to have a deeper relationship with God, that you continue to fight the good fight of faith and grow strong and courageous in your daily battles with the enemy. I encourage you to subscribe to our page, like us on Facebook, and log on to our website. There you can submit a prayer request and support this ministry through a financial gift. And remember, if each one can reach one, and a reached one can reach one, then a one one will have one one, and the kingdom will have been advanced one soul at a time. Thank you, and have a great day.